The Firm, India's only show on corporate law, tax and audit matters. Hello and welcome to The Firm on the show this week. There's good news for LG, Glaxo, Maruti Suzuki, Sony, Pepsi, Canon, Xerox, Hire, Reebok, Daikin and a dozen other MNCs in India even though they lost the marketing intangibles case in the Delhi High Court. And multinationals beware, the Google tax is here. Our top story this week brings good news for multinationals in India. Well, it's bad news, but with a big fat silver lining. 22 MNCs in India have been fighting a transfer pricing tax battle for four years now. Round one of that battle went in favor of the tax department. Round two was won by the taxpayers. And in round three, we seem to have a divided verdict. Just this week, the Delhi High Court delivered its decision in the marketing intangibles case. Paiswini Upadhyay gets you a recap of the battle so far, important principles laid down by the Delhi High Court and their implications. This case on marketing intangibles began in 2012. The tax department claimed that Indian MNC subsidiaries such as LG, GlaxoSmithKline, Maruti Suzuki, Sony, Pepsi Foods, Canon, Xerox and a dozen others were creating marketing intangibles. That is, the money spent by these Indian companies on advertising and marketing also promotes the parent brand. And so, the Indian subsidiaries should be adequately compensated by the parent for this service. In round 1, the special bench of the Delhi ITAT agreed with revenue and said that the foreign parent needs to compensate the Indian subsidiary for the excess advertising and marketing done to build the foreign brand in India. To determine excess fence, the special bench approved of a bright line test used by the tax department to calculate the non-routine expenditure made by the Indian subsidiaries to maintain the foreign brand. The bright line test was getting applied in order to see that uh, if the comparables had more expenses in, in respect of uh, advertising, marketing and promotion than the tested party, which is the party in question for whose profits you are computing, then the excess is something which is uh, non-routine and therefore it should be compensated by the parent. That was the revenue, uh, revenue's contention and uh, most of the taxpayers were getting aggrieved because of that. This was the most important point that how the bright line was inappropriately was applied for all taxpayers as in, in general that no matter who you are and no matter in what form of remuneration you are receiving you have to mandatorily get a reimbursement for the excess AMP. There were actually various criteria laid down by the special bench which was helping the taxing authorities to examine various transactions and uh, that was actually followed as a rule book. In round two, the rule book didn't quite help the tax department. BMW India, a distributor entity owned by BMW Global, decided to fight a separate battle. It argued that its parent did not need to compensate it for advertising and marketing expenses as that compensation was already factored into its importation agreement with the parent. And since it imported the goods at a lower cost, its gross profit and net profit margins were higher than that of its comparables. The Delhi ITAC bought BMW's argument that it was getting a reasonable gross margin commensurate to its function of brand building in India. It could be substantiated that the comparables which were chosen in the case of BMW, so BMW's intensity of functions were more than the comparables. However, its gross margin was also more commensurately more than the comparables and that's how the tribunal said that there was no reason or occasion for BMW to get a further or, or I would say additional reimbursement for the expenses. The BMW case was definitely a breather and was a welcome step. The Delhi Tribunal's um, appreciation of the function asset risks of BMW and uh, making that discrimination in the case of BMW was definitely a breather. Uh, having said that, the cases that were there in the special bench, all of the cases with respect to distribution and the AMP spend with respect to those distributors, that was something which still needed to be clarified. To seek this clarity, the special bench victims knocked at the doors of the Delhi High Court. They lost, but experts say the companies should be delighted with the outcome. 
the Delhi High Court rejected the taxpayers' argument that advertising, marketing and promotional expenses are not international transactions. The High Court wanted to make sure that it opines on the principles of transfer pricing and uh, the moot question in the room whether or not the AMP expenses can be computed with the bright line test and what to do in case of distributors. Instead of getting caught up in whether or not it's an international transaction, the court actually said two or three at two, at two or three places. It actually said that look, there is a parent company and there is a subsidiary, and there is suitable nexus uh, with respect to um, you know these transactions. So we believe that it's very much within the gamut of international transaction in order to proceed further to do its transfer pricing analysis. That loss has been accompanied by other victories in the same decision. The first important principle in favor of the companies is the High Court's conclusion on economic ownership of the brand. The tax department has been taking a stance that as a licensee of a brand, if the Indian company is incurring significant amount of expenses on advertising and marketing, it should be reimbursed in the same year. Because if the license was impaired at a future date, the Indian company would not be able to earn profits by exploiting the brand and the government will lose out on the tax. That argument had found favour with the special bench but was shot down by the Delhi High Court. The Delhi High Court said that let's cross the bridge when it comes. So let's not preempt that there can be ever an impairment of, of licence and for that I want, to get, I want to get a share of tax now. As in, if at all, there is a termination of the license agreement, then one would need to see in that particular year as to whether the, the subsidy need to be compensated for the impairment of the license based upon several parameters. It's not that every, each and every impairment of license would entail to a compensation, but whether the subsidy needs to be compensated at all for the impairment would be an exercise in the year in which the license is terminated, but not now. I think, uh, again, this is aligned with uh, perhaps the concept of exit charges, which many of the European jurisdictions also have. So, uh, again, this I think it makes a lot of sense what they are saying with respect to your day-to-day -day transactions, uh, what, what is coming through the tax office and what is in the more in the long-term horizon of a development of a marketing intangible. There is a second key principle that has gone in favour of the companies. The Delhi High Court has concluded that the tax department needs to take a bundled approach towards the transaction. That is, if on applying a transaction net margin method, a company's margins were in line with the comparables, then individual line items adding up to the margin should not be scrutinized. The tax department had argued in favour of individual comparison and lost. The High Court ruling is actually discriminates between different kinds of distributors, a limited risk distributor, a distributor who is taking some risk versus a fully entrepreneurial uh, risk taking distributor. So it first says that you've got to uh, appreciate the function asset risk which is the building blocks of transfer pricing. First you, you know, set that correctly, then choose the method and if the method chosen is TNMM, then after you've done the comparative analysis and uh, looked at the profits of the of the comparables, thereafter you need not go back. And if they are found in line, then you need not go back and now look at individual line items and try to pull out the AMP expense and ask for uh, uh, further reimbursement of the same. So that that is not needed, and uh, that that is not required at all because adequate remuneration has been reported in the. Uh, subsidiaries uh, profitability. The Delhi High Court has also made a point that in an overall TNMM cannot be applied for licensed manufacturers. So this brings to a very important point that the licensed manufacturers when they defend the cases on marketing intangibles or even otherwise they would need to they would need to certainly consider that those days of routine mundane way of operating in transfer pricing by you know by having those plain vanilla overall TNMM those days are over. So you have to go with transactional by transactional approach, typically for transactions like import of raw materials where if you are importing from a, on a cost plus from the other side, then test the other side. If you have a royalty payment and if you are able to identify proper you know, third party comparable license agreements, go for a cup analysis or else you go for a proper residual profit split analysis to, to, to uh, uh, demonstrate or to test out your royalty, but not an overall TNMM. 
the third important principle laid down by the Delhi High Court poses a serious issue for the tax department. The High Court rejected revenue's use of a bright line test to determine excess advertising and marketing spend, saying the law doesn't provide for it. Experts say the tax department has been applying the test mechanically without doing a functions, assets and risk analysis of the company in question. So if the tax department cannot use a bright line test, what options does it have? If in the very remote case where you can see the distributor's intensity is so very high as compared to the comparable that you cannot even call them comparables, then you go for a profit split. But reimbursement of expenses without looking into any other aspects of the, the, the profitability or the, the financials of the distributor was, was, is and would never be the, be the test or the, the records which a revenue can apply. It is not so difficult to actually find out whether a particular transaction was at arm's length. You see world has developed so much no? and uh, in this developed world you can't say that you can't find out comparable prices or that uh, you can't, uh, it is not impossible to find out comparables. Even though it is actually insofar as intangibles are concerned, it is a complex issue, but still I think uh, we, uh, it, it is not difficult for human minds actually to find out comparables. Not sure if the revenue department will agree with that view. For now, the Delhi High Court has laid down the framework for the tax department and companies on the issue of marketing intangibles and sent the cases back to the tribunal for fresh consideration. Experts say if the tribunal applies the principles appropriately, which it ought to, it will not only bring huge relief for the companies, but also build brand India in the process. In Mumbai, Paisvani Upadhyay. Well, now we await the tribunal's decision on the tax calculation aspect and who knows, eventually all of this may end up in the Supreme Court. So, in short, this is hardly the final word in this matter. On that note, let's take a break on the farm. But coming up next, multinationals beware, the Google tax is here. Basic structure is an architectural expression. What is part of basic structure? Nobody quite knows. And T.R. Andhyarujina remembers the Kesavananda Bharti case.